Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another edition of The Morgan Show. I'm Lamont Germany, joined by Darius Brackett. This is your place, ladies and gentlemen, this is your space for all things Morgan State University Athletics. And we are in transitional phase, Darius, as a lot of sports are wrapping up, but we still have a handful of sports that are into the spring thing. We'll begin, Darius, with basketball. Both you and I were in Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Bears couldn't run the table. The men and the women both dismiss on semifinal Friday. The ladies, in heartbreaking fashion with that buzzer beater. The gentlemen also fell. Both teams losing to Norfolk State. And I think both teams really thought that they had what it took to go the distance. It just didn't happen in Norfolk for Morgan basketball. Yeah, they, they put it together. Sometimes the ball just doesn't fall in the hoop, and that's the case for the Morgan State Bears. And that was just unlucky fate. However, teams were able to recover. And, yes, the season may be over, but some people are still playing basketball. And the one person that's playing basketball, Lajo Granson, the big man himself. He will be competing in the Dos Equis 3v3 National Championship, which is a FIBA-sanctioned event. And out of 64 players to jumpstart an NBA career, he was one that was selected. And this will take place April 1st through 3rd at the Sugar Mill in New Orleans. Proud of the Morgan State University Gotta be. senior, Lazio Granson, going to be representing Morgan on the national stage. Also wrapping up their season, Darius Morgan State bowling team finishing fifth in the MEAC at the MEAC championships. And I think for the bowling team, a disappointing finish. They also, another team that felt they had the ammunition to maybe make a run for a championship. You're right. The, the great season overall. Congratulations to those ladies. You made it this far. You finished with a record of 65 and 35, which is great. Unfortunately, the season does come short when you fall to Dell State and you finish fifth. But again, it's all about reloading weapons. Natalia Vega, you're going to be missing on her. But it's okay. You're building for the following season. And I've talked to Coach Falbo plenty of times, so I know he's just as excited after this game ended because those girls had fun. They competed. But he knows a championship is right around the corner. Oh, they're going to be locked and loaded, ready to do it all over again next season. We do have some sports that are in full effect as we speak. The champions, the defending champs in the MEAC, the Lady Bears softball team, off to a strong start in conference play. They're in first place in the MEAC at 5-1. and one. They have a real big weekend coming up this weekend against a team that could challenge Morgan for the championship, the Howard Ooh. Bison. Yeah, so this is, this is what makes it interesting. You know, softball, you start off a little rocky to begin the season, and now they found their, stri their stride, excuse me, and you're hitting a two-game win streak. If they do play today, which is March, what, 30th? If they do play today, they'll take on Towson, and they can continue that win streak. If not, like you said, they got a 3 P match this weekend against Howard. And that's the one that counts. That's yeah, oh, Miak, got to have that one. And that's going to be – and you're at home. You're going to be here, right here, live – at M Lois T. Murray Field, so you got to take advantage of that. Got the home crowd, enjoy your, enjoy the weekend, three-peat match, you get them all three down, you're coasting. It's a long journey in softball. They got 21 games total in the MEAC that they have to play before the tournament next month in May. Also going on throughout the course of the spring, the tennis team is trying to see if they can get to championship level and they got a couple of big matches coming up there oh and it's going to be amazing they take on they take on temple university they got to travel down there and then they come right back and they got to play in their own backyard where they take on howard against some more miak play what more do you love about that it's just miak all around for everybody and track and field also going on they've transitioned from the indoor to the outdoor just hitting their stride but I think for the throwers, for the shot put and the discus, it really doesn't matter indoor, outdoor. And we got Get a young man in Zachary Dillon. He's the MEAC track and field athlete of the week, almost setting records every week throwing that shot. And congratulations to him. And like you said, track and field, you're transitioning. And I know it's some time, ladies and gentlemen, but it's okay. April 23rd, the Legacy Track Me is coming back. It's been away since COVID. Now they're back. It's the only I repeat, the only track and field event that will be hosted right here at Hughes Stadium. So take advantage of it. Come out and show some support. 
And the Legacy Track Meet is so named because of all the track and field legends throughout the history of Morgan State University. I think you could argue, Darius, that of all the sports ever at Morgan, Morgan is probably more decorated in track and field historically than any other sport, and they honor that legacy with the Legacy Track Meet, and it is so good, as you mentioned, that it's coming back at the end of April. Rightfully April 23rd. named. Absolutely. So the place and the space to keep you up to date on all things Morgan State University Athletics, right here, The Morgan Show. For Darius Brockett, I'm Lamont Germany. We thank you for joining us on another edition of The Morgan Show.